Hello, everybody. I am João Federici, and thank you for sticking around for this virtual conversation. The whole Mill Valley team was thrilled to bring this exceptional family portrait of Belgrade in 1993. So, without further ado, it's my pleasure to bring out the director of Celts, Milica Tomovic, and the co writer, Tanya Sijvar. Hello. Hi. Thank you for having us. Thank you. This is a pleasure for us to have you. Um, congratulations on your movie, and thank you for accepting our invitation for this conversation. Milica, I will start with you. You are a young filmmaker who, I believe, in 1993, you were the same age as Minya, the sweet Katarin Dimitch. And how did you come up with the idea to write about this specific family in this agitated year in many lives in the late Yugoslavia? Uh, well, the first uh, idea came up, uh, it was uh, Tanya and I was thinking about making an ensemble movie and I was talking about the birthday party I had when I was eight, uh, which, which was some terrible birthday party and uh, it wasn't that good and I had kind of a trauma and after, afterwards I didn't even uh, celebrate my birthday. so. I decided to make that as a framing and we were talking about that we are some some somewhere similar age now as our parents were when it was 1993 which was a horrific year for all our uh, our countries and we were just talking about that we were we were thinking that they, they had like uh you know uh knowledge and crew how to deal with difficult situations but now that we are in their age we we, we know that it, it's not true as we don't know how to deal with our situation right now so they didn't know it also but they they covered it up really really well and i don't know they they, they were as stupid as we are now <laughs> and which was very very interesting for for us to write them and to make them up, and I don't know, yeah, so... Yeah. I... <laughs> and Tanya, I'd love to hear a little bit about your background in theater and how you come to film. Well, yeah, I write primarily for theater, but uh, recently, some, and somehow recently, I've been interested in many different formats and forms of text. So I just showed me it's a beautiful book we produced for one exhibition. So I've been also working in visual arts. Uh, I recently wrote an opera piece. So I'm kind of trying to experiment now with more and more text uh, sorts, let's say, and also ways of presenting text. I actually studied with Milica, this is where we met. It's film and theater school. And in writing department, we were actually studying both. But uh, it's quite conservative school. And somehow how they taught us, especially in writing, is that uh, there is no literary value in like script. It's just serving the purpose of um, further filming and this always kept me a bit like <laughs> further from it because I was always interested in syntax in like language in the stuff that I can explore in, in level of text mm -hmm. but then through friendship and kindness <laughs> actually I kind of came back to to, to film uh, because for a while I thought uh, yeah I'm not sure how how to kind of uh, uh, contribute to this specific format, which I still have to accept also for my ego, <laughs> that it, is still, it has to serve a purpose. But uh, then uh, what, what came as a really beautiful, beautiful surprise compared to theater, for example, is when I came to set of cells and uh, actually it was some magical experience in a way that we, when we were conceiving the film, when we were thinking about it, Milica had this uh, notion of a pop-up um, book for children. So she wanted to present each character and each situation uh, and somehow like as if we are opening a, a book page and the whole world somehow pops up. And this is exactly what I had when I came to film set because it was really kind of 
one-to-one uh, -one almost really representing what we did uh, on paper, which of course never happens in theater because you have another type of abstraction, another type of language, and it would be terrible theater, of probably, if it would be so realistic. But in this sense, this was really exciting for me somehow to discover that this is also really enjoyable and possible to explore this form further. So thank you, Milica, for your patience. Thank you. Yeah, that's amazing. And uh, uh, Milica, uh, Milica uh, I know that uh, you had a desire to direct an ens ensemble. You did it. What a cast. <laughs> uh, could you tell us how was it working with a huge group of kids and a bunch of adult art actors? Uh, well, it was it was really great. I actually uh, really like to work with actors, and this is my favorite part of directing. Um, and I think that uh, we had a lot of rehearsals before shooting. We had uh, months, month and a half, I think, of some kind of improvisation and working on biographies of the characters and how they their relationship how to get to how they get to know each other how did they how are they uh, on new year's eve how are they on birthdays when did they get like um, uh, when did they argue about what and um, with kids it was somewhere similar i told this already on sarajevo Festival, we had like a bunch of birthdays. We celebrated a couple of times. And this is how we did with kids also. We did some kind of improvisations. But, um, and, and the way that uh, shooting day started, it was first with kids and then with the adults. And this is a very great concept because uh, the kids give you so much, you know, mm -hmm. the, they're, they're full of, you know, I don't know, they always, they say a bunch of things that are amazing and then you you are like wow this is not happening and um, and they give you so much energy so you can continue afterwards it was kind of like a gasoline for us to to continue our shooting day but also it was very very hard of course because working with kids it means like you have 10 10 children of eight years years old who don't want to be in a frame who like to kick each other with with the you know, with the props they've got you know i was always telling the kid who who is who played the leonardo oh, stop so sweet. Yeah, yeah stop uh, uh, sticking uh, your knife into other kids please or i'm gonna you know uh, go crazy you know and so it it, there, there were a lot of, lot of those things, and yeah, they, they all had to pee. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. that was that was kind of fun. You never, you <laughs> never had a like, uh, you never could have done like two takes in a row because some of the kids have to pee. <laughs> And yeah. Was, yeah. So it was very interesting. <laughs> we had to learn that we we uh, we don't uh, we we shouldn't give them uh, juices before <laughs> shooting. And yeah. you know, we were like, only when you shoot that you are drinking, you can drink. So yeah, <laughs> we had to learn that. So yeah, that that's that's about it, I think. Is it in interesting how you said about the rehearsals, and yeah. also about the improvisations in these rehearsals. Uh, during the production, how much, if any, uh, of the film was improvised? I say that because the dialogues seem so organic, you know, during the film. And uh, you, you, you both write the lines or, and they work in the lines or they propose you during the rehearsals. Uh, during the rehearsals, we never did lines. We uh, we read the script twice, and I think I don't know for you, Tanya, but I think that maybe uh, like twenty percent of the movie is improvised, but the rest is uh, pretty much written. I think that what we try to do, uh, as I remember now, uh, uh, is that we try to get into some situation from. Uh, improvisation and then go into the into the lines and go out yeah. uh, go out from it uh, with improvisation so some of the things 
uh, uh, of their improvisations, which they are great actors and very well uh, skilled. So much more improvisations are left uh, for, uh, for the kids. All the parts with kids, uh, they had the scripted, but there is a bunch of it that were improvised by them. But most of the of the of the of the things are are scripted actually, and which is great because uh, this is they they didn't get tired of the script. It was interesting for them. They loved to doing their lines, so it was kind of. Uh, you know, That's it, uh, it, I need to shout out, yeah, to congratulations both of you about this incredible script because they are they every single character has its own story to be told and they succeed without doubt. It is also the great uh, result of editing because I can imagine the craziness was to edit this film, and that's the question: How was it for you to work with the editor Elena Maximovich. Some, Elena Maximovich. Yes, on such incredible and particular particular stories. No, how was that? Because there's a lot of stories to put together. Uh, well, with Elena, I worked like a lot. We know each other from my high school and her faculty and we started working together from the beginning of first year of our faculty and um, I mean we know each other so well it was great but she had a lot of work she she, she edited for I think year maybe year and a half if it was a long time because we had some <laughs> version and we showed it to Tanya actually and it lasted like two hours 20 minutes it was like titanic <laughs> almost <laughs> and i mean everybody was oh this is boring and tanya was the only one it was great for me <laughs> <laughs> because i loved hearing all yeah, of yeah. it <laughs> but i think she is definitely an amazing editor and i think actually what was interesting for her also that is not maybe the most typical work she does she normally also doesn't do that many fiction films uh, that were written in such way and that were acted in such way because she is one of the best young editors right now but she was working more in like atmospheric documentary films and so on. The, so. Yeah, there was a, because uh, the storyline switches from um, characters to characters to characters, there was this kind of, um, there was this uh, danger to say, uh, to lose some of the characters. Mm. So when you uh -huh. feel one, you get too much and you get attached, but the story is not about that character. Yeah, yeah. So you always have to be careful not to, uh, not to give all, uh, too much space to one. Mm. So to be but in a balance. But it didn't happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, uh, I mean, with, for example, with dad's brother, uh, the punk rock with, with uh, young, younger, uh, older sister. There was a huge like storyline between them, but it couldn't it couldn't happen. I mean, it it, it was too much. But it was great. I had uh, it's completely yeah. comprehensive. The whole yeah. lives there. You never, and, uh, you never yeah, yeah, that it's uh, actually a quite a short period of time because they had so much fun you're like i'm here also the whole night with them yeah um i'm curious how was it to be part of the lgbtq plus community in the 90s and now in serbia much has changed since then this is for both of you yeah, uh, so uh, I think that for the 90s, we cannot say. We did the uh, research, of course. Uh, I've seen this uh, book about the guy who was cruising from uh, 80s till the late 90s. Uh, he, uh, he did a script of, a script, I know, a, st a little story about each lover he, he met. And uh, in Belgrade, it was a, uh, also, like every, everywhere else, it was a scene, you know, but it was a hidden scene secretive of course but where but people knew the places where they can meet each other there was all, always a danger to to be beaten up uh, in those years but uh, also in the small circles they lived their lives and they were free in their 
in the in their circle. So yeah, it was of course it was different because about this uh, subject it was uh, uh, talked differently. Now it's much more easier because all the characters or LGBTQ plus characters are more here in our series, in, uh, I don't know, movies and uh, subject uh, of, uh, about the rights are always popped up uh, politically also. So uh, it's much more different, uh, different kind of uh, discourse than it was in the in the 90s. And uh, of course, I was always, uh, we were re uh, researching about, uh, you know, AIDS that came in the I uh, 90s and uh, the first uh, person who, who got AIDS in uh, the 90s in Yugoslavia was from Belgrade. And it was, uh, I think, our famous drummer. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so, I don't know. Uh, of course, it was different, but my, uh, not mine, our position was never uh, to now uh, elaborate about how how was it to be. Mm. It's it's just to show how they were, you know, in this f family, uh, in this kind of family, and I think that was the most honest way that we could. You know, we, we just, they, they were characters who came there and had the dramas and they were pain in the asses, you know, they were their mm -hmm. friends, nothing, yes. nothing, nothing more or less, you know, how it happens. I, I could recommend uh, some bo one book that was edited also by our friend her colleague Olga Dmitrievich, which is like uh, queer histories in Yugoslavia. So it's kind of a glossary and it's also some kind of... Um, overview of many different aspects of uh, having this identity and living these lives in different areas of Yugoslavia and post-Yugoslav countries. And there is also in the 90s, there were some movies like this Marvelous, which is like uh, kind of also, actually it was filmed maybe in 96, uh, which was kind of cult yeah. film. Uh, 95, I don't 95. Yeah, like almost end of the war in Bosnia and Croatia, which is about, um, transgender person who actually is dating like warlord or something like this. So it's kind of a combination and it maybe corresponds in some way, although completely different, which is also it's, it's semi-documentary, semi-fiction film. But so there were some, of course, things were happening. So scene was existing and somehow again vivid, but it was not as depicted as now, as Milica just explained, but still there are traces. So as we can see, it's like, the, 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 the now uh, history somehow is being rewritten through all these uh, tryouts. And I think as she said, it wasn't, um, yeah, it wasn't really the aim to really represent historical uh, truth in some sense, if like, or they struggles outside of this house or outside of, of, of this evening, yeah. which must have happened. We took it as somehow self-understandable. Okay, it's a homophobic society to an extent, but we are not dealing with this right now. So we are dealing with just somehow naturalized. We are naturalizing this into this uh, uh, family, into household. this situation, household, and they, it's somehow self-given. No one is talking about this except for the mother. So this is a bit like there is a trace of this through the, through the relationship of mother and son. So somehow we can also sense that maybe she hasn't forgiven whatever is there to forgive, but that there is this tension between them. But this is also somehow really, really subtle um, input on this situation, which I think is then really interesting because I think this intervention to have as many queer characters as this movie has is really just a statement but without uh, going into like history of 93 in this sense somehow it's totally clear there and that, that yeah, that's yeah. that's the make that the importance of the film and uh we unfortunately our time is so short and uh i have the last question for you uh both i'd like to know if you have any new project that you can share with us um, I have some TV series uh, that it's called Block 
27 and I cannot talk about it. I don't know. I, I don't know if I can talk about it, but it's better not to talk about it. Uh, I think it will be great if you come out in uh, January 2022. Is, what's this year? It's yeah. 21. Yeah, 2022. Yeah. But Tanya is working on something very, very interesting now. So take it away. Oh. Please, Tanya, share it. I'm working on that. Uh, well, you uh, said the Marble S, which is from uh, Želimir Zilnik. Yes, so Želimir Zilnik is the director of this Marble S movie we mentioned in the, just now. So he is actually one of the most famous Yugoslav directors from Black Wave and so on. So he was born many years before us and even before this character, so in 42. So it's completely different generation and different style and everything like of this experimental and documentary filmmaking. And we are actually now writing a script. We've been preparing for two years somehow now, but now we are writing it in a week. <laughs> so, it's, so it's quite a nice uh, and a beautiful challenge and it's somehow um, it's a project uh, that should um, deal with the um, Yugoslav history of maybe censorship in some sense, because his second film was banned uh, in 71. And now it was somehow it resurrected mysteriously. It was somehow taken away. The, it was on film. Now uh, they digitalized it and the, the big portion of the material uh, is uh, kept somehow, even the sound. And now we are writing another somehow story around the uh, characters who are now living 50 years after in the, and many of them are actually living so they still want to take part in the film and somehow we are imagining some what happened to them now and so, so interpolation would be with this old material so th that's that's great uh, congratulations again on the amazing you. film and once and again, thank you so much, Melissa and Tanya, for making this time for to uh, to chat with us. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.